Hello, how are you? Welcome back to Hey Han. I'm your host, Hannah Fletcher, and today we are speaking with Tom Ward. Now, before we get into the episode, make sure that you guys go ahead and interact with this content in any way possible. If you're listening, please leave a review. It helps us out so much. And please, if you are watching, make sure that you're subscribed with notifications turned on. Leave a comment, like the video, do whatever you need to do, but please, please interact with this content and share it with family and friends as this is... A podcast that is for everybody from all different types of walks of life. And I'm always so excited to have the guests on and to have such great conversations with them. And I would really love if the conversations could continue to be shared with so many different types of people. So I really appreciate your time. Here we go. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the conversation between myself and Tom Ward. All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of Hey Han. I'm Hannah Fletcher, and today I have Tom Ward joining me. Oh my gosh, I love your background. I need one of those. That is so sick. Thank you. <laughs> You'll get there. That's You'll awesome. have it. Yeah, I know. You. Wait, where did you where did you get the sign? I love the sign. Where'd you get that? Somewhere, I don't know, online. I had somebody make up, mm. a, you know, my logo, and then, you know, just find neon sign people. If I would go, that I want to so sign. Cool. I see other, I see all these influencers with signs. I want to sign. Right. <laughs> Tom gets a sign. I love that. Right. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for coming on. It's going to be, I love the fact that we get to have a conversation. What I love is like interviewing other people that also conduct interviews is such a funky space, but I love it. I just think, I think it's so much fun. I love it so much. I want to, first of all, like check in with you before we dive in completely. I know that you had back surgery. How are you doing? How are you feeling? <laughs> How's the recovery process been for you? It's good. This is the first like interview. I actually have my first, I'm giving an interview tomorrow. It's like my first one. Mm -hmm. I, I had surgery three weeks ago. So, um, you know, good. I'm back. I'm walking. I'm moving around. You know, I'm not working out yet again. I can't wait, but, uh, you know, soon. So mm -hmm. getting there. Good. That's good. I'm so glad. I love that you've been like sharing your recovery process too. And the fact that you've been like keeping everybody updated because that's such a big deal. I think any type of surgery, heck, I'm scared to death, like of wisdom teeth getting removed, like let alone anything else. So I love that you've been like keeping everybody updated because I've, I've been thinking about you and I'm like, I hope he's doing okay. I hope he's recovering. And thank you for the updates. I'm really glad to have seen them. It's more out of boredom than anything else. You know, I'm not doing interviews. I'm like, I need content of some kind. Like, I'm driving my wife crazy. Film this. Come on, let's go. Come on, babe. Don't you love me? That's great. <laughs> well, I want to talk to you. Obviously, you are an interviewer yourself. First of all, I kind of want to start, like, where did you get your start? Did you always think that you were going to be an interviewer? And then we'll kind of get into your show. But I kind of want to learn more about your journey and your story. And then we'll get into the Tom Ward show and everything like that. Yeah, yeah. no, this was not even, it wasn't even a thought in my mind. I didn't even know it was a job or I didn't know anyone. I'm from New Jersey. <clears throat> I had a career in sales for 20 years. I was, yeah. when I started this seven years ago, I was selling kitchen equipment to grocery stores. So like, the most normal, regular guy you can imagine. I didn't know any celebrities. I didn't know anyone in the entertainment business. I didn't have any dreams of being in the entertainment business. I really have no talents other than talking to people. So um, it kind of just came, it, it just kind of randomly came about. I was not happy in my job and uh, I was kind of mid-career and I read this book <clears throat> called Reinventing You. And the author's whole thing was, like you can change your, and this is advice to anyone watching or listening to this, you can change your narrative at any time at, you know, at 50 years old, if you decide you want to be a hip hop expert, like you could do that, <laughs> but it's going to take some work, like, right. You need credibility. You can't just say, Hey, I'm a hip hop expert. Right. But if you start writing, you know, in blogs, if you start going on podcast, hip hop podcast, talking about the new albums that just dropped, if you have a popular Spotify playlist, like those kind of things, then people go, hey, okay, this person knows what they're talking about. So our whole thing, and I agree, the quickest and cheapest way to get credibility in a new field is writing. Like it's free, especially now, no one writes. It, the focus is 1000% short form video. That's it. Like no one even gives a f about the long form. Like I don't, I do long form just to get the short form clips. And that's what goes viral, right? But yeah. So it's even more true now than it was seven years ago. Um, you know, writing really separates yourself 
um, from your peers out there. So I just, I started a little blog. I bought my domain, tomward.com, and I just started writing about things that interested me. Like I'm into health and fitness, so I just write a post about that. And I'm also, you know, um, a music nut. So then I'd write a, you know, a post about albums that came out that week. And it was, there was no theme throughout this. It was just random things I was into. And I've always been interested in business. And um, I started doing some like marketing type posts and stuff like that. And that started to get a little traction, but like no one was reading. And I remember one day I was leaving for a work trip and it was like four in the morning and I had an early flight. So I was just having breakfast by myself. Like my wife and kids were asleep and I checked my stats on my blog, like any creator, right? You're obsessively tracking, you know, looking at your oh, analytics. <laughs> and I'm yeah. looking and usually it's like, you know, this article got 10 views and it's like my mom <laughs> and like a couple friends, you know, and I yeah. look <laughs> and this article has 200,000 views. And I was like, what? And I looked, it was, I'm a music guy. And I wrote an article about, I heard an interview with the producer, Rick Rubin. He's a famous music producer. I heard a good interview with him. And I just wrote like one of these clickbaity, you know, 10 life lessons from Rick Rubin kind of articles. And it turns out somehow the actress, Jessica Alba saw the article. I, to this day, I've never met her. I'd be, she probably doesn't even remember, but she shared it on LinkedIn. She said, yo, this article, you know, is awesome. You know, Rick's a legend. Everyone go check this out. And I got all this traffic from Jessica Alba. So Jessica, like wow. shout out to you. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. So how did you feel when you figured out that Jessica Alba had like read your article and everything like that? Like were, were you, obviously you were excited because she shared it, but what was yeah. it like knowing that somebody of her caliber like read your work? I'd be like, oh my gosh, I'd be so jittery. <laughs> it was so bizarre because remember, I'm just, I'm selling kitchen equipment and I'm on my right. way to, I don't know, sell kitchen equipment to some buyer <laughs> somewhere. And all of a sudden, like there's some kind of weird connection with Jessica Alba. Like it didn't even make sense. Like it was exciting, but like, it was just, I guess, puzzling. Like it was cool. A bunch of people viewed it and like somehow she saw it, but I was like, huh, like, what do I do now? Like, how do I follow right. that up? You're like, sweet. Now what? So, yeah. so obviously you're, you're selling kitchen equipment and then we move on to the point where you're doing this blog and then you finally get this peak where Jessica Alba is giving you a boost. Then mm -hmm. how does the Tom Ward show come to be? And how does the development of creating this? And I know that you've had the opportunity of working with Forbes as well. How does that come to be for you? You know, it's a great question. So Forbes comes next before the Tom Ward show. So because okay. of that article, um, actually the woman who wrote the book, uh, reached out to me. We started talking, which was cool. And I was, you know, we were just messaging back and forth. And she goes, Hey, I saw your blog. You should write for Forbes. So she put me in touch. She's one of these Harvard business school thought leaders. So she writes for ever, you know, Forbes, she writes for, um, you know, any publication, Harvard business school review, all these publications. She's like, I'll put you in touch with an editor of Forbes. I'm like, I've never written anywhere. I didn't write for my school paper. Like I don't, I'm not a writer, but you know, when opportunity presents itself, you just, you hop on it. So I said, okay, sure. <laughs> Forbes, like that sounds like a good opportunity. Let's do it. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, I passed the test. I had to call with their editor and I started writing about mainly marketing things. And then um, I realized that I could use Forbes to kind of, you know, create a premium brand around myself. Like I could use that and that kind of separated me from other people out there. It's like, hey, he's associated with Forbes. Like, that's pretty cool. Like, that's he's different. And then people started pitching me um, interviews. Like, I was never an interviewer, but okay. I did Kate okay. Hudson and um, a couple other celebrities. And her PR guy goes, hey, you should interview one of my clients, Jake Paul. And I go, who is Jake Paul? Like, I, I'm 35 at the time. <laughs> Jake is living in the original Team 10 house. Like at this, for me now, I sound like a grandpa in this world. Like this is, he was just a kid. Like he was on Nickelodeon and I never, I go, we're talking Kate Hudson. And then now you're pitching me Jake Paul. Like who the fuck is that? You know, like pitch me somebody like, I want another Kate Hudson interview, you know? Right. But I look him up and I go, who is this kid with 20 million followers that I've never even heard of? I didn't know what an influencer was. I didn't know what a YouTuber was, but I was like, Okay, like I'm interested. Sure, let's go. And we talked for an hour in his garage, just about business and career and like how brand deals work and all this stuff. And I was like, wow. I'm like, this kid, you know, on the surface, 
you know, seems like some dumb kid, but like, I got to peek behind the curtain. Like he's running a multi-million dollar business and I don't think anybody knows it. And no one was covering that world. There was Taylor Lorenz, shout out to Taylor. Um, mm-hmm. And that's it. This is seven years ago. The Business Insider didn't have a creator department. There was the word creator economy wasn't a word. The only press that influencers were getting was, who are you dating? You know, why do you have beef with this other content house? That was it. So because of Jake, he gave me a shout out on the Forbes article. And that's when I saw the power before my eyes. Like he texted me. That was the other thing. After the interview, we exchanged phone numbers. You know this, Hannah. When you meet oh, yeah. most celebrities and you do an interview, Kate Hudson's not giving me her number, right? right. You know, Kate, <laughs> five minutes later, Kate doesn't even remember who, what I look like, right? She's on to the exactly. next thing. Exactly. But like, I'm like, we exchanged numbers. I'm like, that's cool. And then I text him when I posted the article. He immediately shares it. My Twitter blows up because he tags me and it gets 100,000 views in like, I don't know, a half hour. And like for reference, like an average article I was writing at the time would get like 500 views. So I was like, whoa. And that was it. I just, Jake put me in touch with another one. And then I was like, here I am. I'm in the creator world. Like, let's go. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, and that brings me to, I'm so excited to talk to you about this one because they fascinate the heck out of me, but the D'Amelios. And I know that's where I found you because I was doing a deep dive on them. They're so sweet. They look so wonderful. I've never had the pleasure of meeting them, but I know that you've interviewed them several times. And I I was watching your most recent one with the footwear. I didn't know D'Amelio footwear was going to be a thing. And I think it was such a great idea. I I could go on a whole tangent for hours, especially being a girl always having to wear heels. I'm like, yes, we need more (laughs) shoes like this. Oh my gosh. But um, yeah, you've interviewed some of the biggest influencers and content creators in the space and their families. And I think that is phenomenal. And I, I also like have a huge respect for content creators because, well, like you mentioned with Jake, you know, he gives off this one vibe. But then behind the scenes, this kid is a genius, but that's unfortunately not necessarily filtered into the brand that everybody sees and that everybody sees in the clickbait and in the thumbnails and in, in the Snapchat stories and articles about him. You know, people don't get to see that side and learn that side. So that's why I love your show, because you get to kind of really touch on all of these things that people don't necessarily know and understand. And it's such a new territory. It's such a new space. I was I was. um I was dealing with an NIL agreement the other day and I had to look up so many different things in terms of what the heck even is that. So talk to me, what was it like for you having the opportunity to interview? And I mean, like Charlie D'Amelio, she is still the queen of TikTok for years now. How has that been getting to interview somebody? How was it interviewing her and interviewing her parents? What was that like for you? You know, it's, it's, it's flattering. I should, I guess I is the (laughs) word I would use because look, Hannah, I'm a different generation than you are, right? I'm a definitely a different <laughs> generation than Charlie is. So for me to have, to me, they're kids for like mm-hmm. Dixie. Dixie has an album release party and they interview me. Right. Now I don't go anywhere. I'm old. I have kids. <laughs> I'm married. Like I don't go anywhere. Right. But for that <laughs> particular thing, I actually, I actually went to that. Like, so to me, that's an honor. Like I don't have anything in common with these people on the surface. Right. They're rich and famous. I'm not. Right? They have, you know, sometimes tens of millions of followers. I don't. Right. They're young and good looking. Usually I'm old and not, not that great looking. Right. Oh. So on the surface, <laughs> we don't have much in common, but there's a mutual respect. And I think it's because I came at them with. I guess I came at them just out of curiosity, right? I was, I was, Mm -hmm. I didn't want anything out of them. I wasn't trying to use them for clickbait or to, you know, get followers or to like, you know, sell my brand or get, you know, get a brand deal, you know, pitch them something like, no. And like to, to me, like every time a Charlie or an Addison Ray or David Dobrik or any of those reach out to me. I'm like, wow, of all the people who cover this space now, and I don't even really cover creators really much anymore, but mm-hmm. like for them to reach out to me is like, to me, it's a blessing. It's like, wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah. It's like, they're, they're it's like they're looking to you to be able to not necessarily clear the air, but to show a different side of them that people don't necessarily understand exists. And I think that's really I just think that's such a neat concept. You're you're a safe space for them like that. Like that's a, that's a very big honor for them to reach out to you and to 
and to want to be on your show like that. That's a really big honor to you. You should, I'm glad that you feel flattered. You should feel flattered. Oh, for, for sure. Like that. Yeah. It's, so it's fun. So, and I, I learned so much from them too. Like I've learned more from them. I was thinking about getting, going back and getting my MBA and, you know, marketing. And I was kicking it around a couple of years ago, but like, I've got my MBA in marketing from these kids. Like I've learned and been humbled a ton. Like, for example, I interviewed Charlie the first time. And after the interview, I said, Hey, like I'm not getting much engagement on TikTok. Like, what do you think? So like, she's <laughs> reviewing my TikTok now. Like, what is a TikTok audit from Charlie D'Amelio worth? Like, I don't know, tens oh of thousands God. of dollars. I was going to say a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so like things like that, or like, Hey, this brand's doing this. Or like, what do you think? And just, uh, you know, I learned a ton from them. So, um, you know, shout out to all the creators I've ever worked with. So, um, yeah, I've given them things. I give them, you know, mainstream press. I don't ask them, you know, about scandals or who they're dating. Cause I don't give a, f and like in return, like I've got a lot from them too. So it's just been a great relationship for years. I agree with you on that. That's one of the things, especially because I love interviewing and I've done it for several years now. And I love being able to speak to people. I, I went from Larry, the cable guy to Bert Kreischer to even like just friends that are people that I find near and dear and that I feel like the public should know about, you know, I've interviewed so many different types of people on so many different journeys. And like, that is the one thing I'm the same as you. I'm just like, I just don't, I don't want to dig like that. I want to dig into your brain. I don't want to dig into your life. I think there's a very big difference. And I, I'm grateful that we have that in common because you want to nurture that connection and you want to keep that with them and you want them to like you. You don't, nobody wants to turn on the camera and get put on blast. You know what I mean? No. That's not fun, especially if something's going on personally that they're not looking to divulge at that moment. And chances are there is, you know, everybody's going through life constantly. So I think that's really remarkable that, that you interview with that integrity and that respect for your guests as well. I think that that's a great, great asset to have as an interviewer and look at how long you've been around and look at how long you will continue to be around because of that. You know, <laughs> well, it's like, you know, I had a business career for, for a while and it's the same thing. Like it's all about relationships really, you know, that's a takeaway for the person listening or watching this is it's all relationships. So whether you're interviewing somebody or you're selling a product or whatever, like, sure, I can burn somebody and f them and ask them, put them on the spot. And I know it'll get a ton of views. And I'll post that clip, right. clip on TikTok and make them look stupid and it'll blow up. But guess what? I'm never going to interview them again. But also, exactly. I'm <laughs> never going to interview anyone they know because they're going to badmouth me to everyone they know. Same thing if I'm selling a product, like I can try to get rich off this one customer, you know, and give them a terrible deal. Okay, cool. I made more money than I normally would in that one transaction. But like, I look long-term, like I just missed out on 20 future transactions I could have had from them, people they do business with, other companies, because I fucked them. So I would rather go, I'll treat them right. And I'll, mm -hmm. I'll get 20 interviews with the D'Amelios over time where I'll get 20 sales out of this relationship, right? So you just can't be short-sighted in life. You know, you, life is long. It's not short. Exactly. Well, and at the rate that the D'Amelios are going, no kidding. They have, I think they've had what, like a company maybe every year and a half now that they've been famous and it's only been a few years. I mean, the reality show, they're, they're cranking. They are such a fascinating family. I love watching their reality show because I, it's, uh, that's why I like watching the Kardashians too. I know a lot of people will have different opinions on that, but I'm like, I like watching it because I like knowing what goes on behind the scenes in terms of like their business endeavors. I think it's so fascinating to, to be able to make a brand and make it lucrative. And I love learning about like different forms of revenue. I think it's so fascinating. I, I'm nerd out. I'm with that. you. That's, again, that's why I found your show. I was like, yes, <laughs> somebody else gets me. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> and they just, couldn't be so nicer or they couldn't be nicer or more humble. All of them, mm -hmm. you know, the, Parents, yeah. girls, they're just great, good, really good people. That is so sweet. I, I love to hear that. And I figured as much, but it's so nice to be able to like, to hear that from somebody who's had the opportunity to, to speak with them multiple times like that. Um, I want to ask you too. So what I really love about your show is the fact that you, you're very much involved on like, you know, self-enhancement, bettering oneself and like, and obviously like the business side of things and debunking a lot of different types of business that goes on in, I feel like the multimedia entertainment industry. Where did you come up with the idea for your show? Did it, um, did it always live in that space? Would you say from like back to day one, or was there kind of like a transition or was there even like maybe an episode that took off and maybe went a little bit more viral and you were like, okay, this is what people like, let me kind of tailor and adjust and kind of go with the flow in terms of that. 
I don't know. Well, first, no, it was not a direct line to this at all. There was pivots mm-hmm. along the way. And, um, you know, this is, I've been at this for six, seven years, the podcast and YouTube. And it started out, just like I said, I interviewed Jake. It's like, you do the next thing in front of you, right? Like, you know, right. same thing with your career, right? You just, you kind of get the next job, you know, the next better job you can find. And you kind of just go along and keep doing that. I interviewed Jake. He puts me in touch with this person and that gets views. And I kind of just, okay, I'm along for interviewing creators. Like I'm on that ride. Um, and then it kind of really took off. It kind of reached its peak for me with TikTok because I was early on TikTok and I was doing Addison Ray and Charlie and all them right as, you know, they started to kind of blow up. Um, but after that, I took a break because I kind of got tired of it. Eventually got to be the same story kind of over and over again. And it just kind of, kind of kept repeating itself. You know, people with similar backgrounds, there's nothing worse. I don't know if you feel this way, but to me, the interesting people to interview are the people who have been kicked around a, a lot, right? It's not the person that like, you know, hit it out of the park when they were 18 and they've been successful ever since. It's like, I can't relate to that at all. I was a mess at 18. Right. Like I was even the person like who didn't, you know, who was in jail for a year. You know what I mean? They got divorced mm-hmm. five times, you know, <laughs> they had six businesses go bankrupt before they hit it. Like, I want to talk to that person. That person. And, <laughs> yeah. They're yeah. way more interesting, but like, a lot of the TikTokers, and I respect all my love, but this some it wasn't as relatable to me, you know, just kind of posting a video and blowing up and then you're rich and famous. Like it, I was hearing that same kind of story over and over again. So I took a break. I didn't post for like six months. And then I pivoted to business content, like just business, doing like Forbes 30 under 30, you know, founders and stuff like mm-hmm. that. And that was a huge mistake. That was, that was a terrible, terrible move looking back. And then I recently, I interviewed Rob Deerdeck, and that's when it finally became clear to me, like, I'm interested in successful people and like, just from all walks of like, I don't want to just limit myself to creators. Like I want to talk to an athlete. I want to talk to, you know, successful entrepreneur. I want to talk to, you know, whoever. And the whole goal of the show is to, you know, learn how to succeed in business and in life from this person this week. Like every week we're gonna learn something from this person that we can apply to our lives. And Rob Deerdeck, like when I interviewed him, like I got real actionable things that I applied to my life. And I was like, man, this is, man, I'm like, I feel better. It was worth every second um, that I spent, because you know, booking the guest and then travel yes. and I got to get my camera guys and then I got to work with them and editing it. Then for me, then I got to write a Forbes article on top of that. Like it was <laughs> worth every second. I'm like, I want to learn more um, from each episode. Like, cause if I'm learning the person watching or listening is learning too. So like we all win, like I'm in this, just like the listener is like, I don't have this figured out. Like I'm learning every week too. Isn't that the best when you can walk away and actually implement something from the guests that you got to speak to or from the person that you interviewed? I think that is that is such a gift. I just I love having that opportunity. And it doesn't happen. I don't know about you, but for me, it doesn't happen every single interview by any means. (laughs) But I will. I had somebody recently that I was speaking to. He was a very nice gentleman. And he was mentioning about like basically an approach to how when you are speaking to your friend and and especially for me being, I'm, I'm a 26 year old girl. So a lot of my friends are just going through a lot of different phases of life. I've got friends that are engaged, friends that are married, friends that are single and just spinning around in a circle, like a car in NASCAR, you know, just confused. Yeah. So I have a lot of friends and I feel like I'm obligated to constantly be giving them advice, even though I don't necessarily feel like I'm maybe hundred percent qualified to give them advice, but I feel like that's what they're calling me for. And he was like, why are you doing that? He said, he said, ask them first if they even want advice. And he said, chances are you're going to find out that they may not even want it and ask them, say, look, I'm not trying to be rude, but do you even want any advice from me right now? Or are you looking for me to just listen? Are you just looking to vent? Do you need to vent maybe two or three times before you're even open to receive advice? And I was like, you just saved me so many rounds of having to take an Advil. (laughs) Like You just (laughs) saved me from so many headaches. Thank you, sir. (laughs) And And you're ahead of me. I didn't learn that lesson (laughs) until my thirties and I don't give advice unless I'm specifically asked because my wife told me that I learned from my wife, but she's just like, Mm -hmm. you know, I would always try to fix, you know, if she was complaining about something, like I would just, 
I would want to help. So I would like try to fix it for her. Like, oh, you should do this or this or this. And it used to drive her crazy. And she, 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 she would just go, I not, I didn't ask you to, I just want to vent. Like, I'm not asking you to solve my problem at all. Like, you know, (laughs) you're here just to listen to me. I'm like, oh, okay. That makes sense. You're like, even better. Thanks. Yeah, I don't have to do anything. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. I'm all ears, babe. I gotcha. That's great. Um, Well, kind of on the topic of advice and and kind of like um, from the mentoring perspective, you recently came out with an episode that I thought was super fascinating and it caught my eye. And I love that you did this because I one of my personal missions is to kind of debunk the idea of of what we do, because I didn't know what we do until I started doing what we do. My degree is in acting. And then I realized very quickly that I love acting very much and I love to coach, but I also duly love speaking and talking to people and interviewing them. And um, so I only learned about publicists and booking and and how to how to pitch. And I only learned all of that by having to teach myself kind of in real time and learning aside um, basically my mentor, Mike. So um, where did you get the idea to come out with the episode on how to basically like go about getting guests if you are looking to interview? I think that that was such a great episode to make, but I want to pick your brain and ask, what is it that made you compelled to make that episode and to, to share what we know with the world? Because I think that that's such a great tool and such a great gift that you gave by making that episode. You know, I guess the older I get, the more, when I was younger, I tried to hold on to everything, right? Like, you know, my old, my attitude, and I don't think I'm alone, you know, I'm like you, I did, I don't have an entertainment background. I didn't know about publicists or that world. Like, remember, I'm selling kitchen equipment. Like, what do I know right. about a PR <laughs> company? I don't know. But but these are things I, I learned over time and figured it out and fine-tuned to get good at. So it's like, the old me is like, why the fuck would I tell anyone? <laughs> you know, I, I don't want to give them the secret. Maybe they're going to do it better than me and compete with me and kick my ass. Like, fuck them. Like, that's my whole thing. Like, fuck them. <laughs> right? I'm not telling them. <laughs> but... It's the number one question I get asked over and over and over again, because I don't have the biggest following. I don't have the biggest show. I don't get the most views yet, but I consistently for seven years have gotten A-list guests consistently. So people are always like baffled, like, how do you do it? Like, how do you get these guests all the time? And I would never really answer them. I just be like, I don't know. You know, I just got to play it <laughs> off like it just happens. Right. But you know, I just wanted to show because everybody's got a podcast now and, you know, especially, you know, most podcasts are guest driven or interview shows, you know, not a lot are just two people talking, you know, most are, you know, have a guest on or have guests on sometimes. So I just thought it could, you know, benefit other people. And guess what? You know, if somebody else can book the same guest as me, okay, cool. Like, you know, I don't have a lock on Charlie D'Amelio interviews. You know, hey, guess what, Tom? Get off yourself. Like, she's going to do thousands of interviews this year, you know, not just with you. So, like, get off yourself, right? You're not that important. <laughs> so that's that's what made me, you know, kind of do it. Well, and I think that that was really good. And uh, first of all, I love the transparency that you gave with, of course, that's a huge fear that somebody's going to implement your strategy and then you turn around and you're the one interviewing them and they're like, oh yeah, I got my show to this level because of this that you actually did. Thank you. You know, of course that's kind of a fear that exists. And I feel like that's just part of the human condition too, at the end of the day. But what I love about that is the fact that you, that you gave that gift, like I mentioned. And, um, and also, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean, and this is something that I've learned and I'm sure you've learned as well, just because somebody has an interview, no two, no two performances in live theater are the same, much like no two interviews are ever the same. We could ask the same set of questions and just because of how we deliver it and what else we add in between the delivery of those questions, we're going to get different types of responses from them. So my final question to you, Tom, is I want to ask you, um, what would be your piece of advice for somebody? And I think that it's remarkable, like you've mentioned, how many years that you've been doing this. And and I love your story, too, because like you said, you were selling kitchen equipment and then now you're here. What would be your advice to somebody if they were wanting to leave? And I feel like this is a very common issue that we see all too well, unfortunately, somebody that may want to leave their safety job and take that leap of faith into into the entertainment industry, what would be that one piece of advice that you would give to that person if you were in the position to be able to do so? Well, first of all, don't quit your job until 
you're making <laughs> the same amount in this new entertainment career, right? So that's one, right? Do not quit your job. That is, right. It's very right. rare that people could just start doing this and quit their job, okay? So I just posted, the, uh, I just posted about this. Um, <laughs> you know, it's easy. Now you know my story, you person listening or watching this. But if you just see me on Instagram, you see me on Paris Hilton's couch or something, you go, oh, wow, this guy got it all figured out, right? He just somehow magically ended up there. But what people don't see is the grind. Like I spent, I don't know, four years probably and lost maybe $20,000. So four years of working a full-time job and literally every Saturday, shout out to my wife, she would take the kids to her parents' house almost every Saturday. And I would sit here in my office for 12 hours and I would write blog posts. I would write Forbes articles. I would reach out to brands. I would reach out to guests every single Saturday for years. And I even do it now still. Um, and nights and weekends and not just investing time, but investing money. Like, I don't know how to edit video. Um, you know, I'm not a camera person. So I paid out of my pocket for people to do that with no income coming in or no idea, like no brand deals coming in and like no, no brand deals even on the horizon, right? Just throwing <laughs> money out the window in the hopes that someday this would make money. And right. you know, it took me four years to start making money. And it took me six years until I was able to quit my job. So, you wow. know, you look back at these interviews and it's like, okay, cool. You know, he's at Charlie D'Amelio's, whatever. And it's like, okay, yeah, but you don't, you didn't see that. I was on, I was literally, when it finally became real to me was, I literally was on this one day, I'm on conference calls about a broken bakery oven at the Sprouts grocery store. I used to sell them ovens that made their bread and cookies and all that stuff, right? So they buy an oven and I guess it was, up, something was wrong with it. And I'm on conference calls for like five hours of conference calls with the manufacturer, with the corporate people, with the people at the store, like all day about this oven that I could give two shits about. Right. And at four o'clock, I leave to go to Paris Hilton's house to interview her and then hang out for a little bit <laughs> after. And I'm like driving home. I go, in what world does this day make any sense at all? Like, I can't tell my coworkers about this. Like, I didn't tell them what I was doing because they were like, what the f*** are you talking about? Like, what? <laughs> Where were you? You know, like, it, it, so my advice to bring this all back is, yeah, that was cool. But did I quit my job after that interview? No, I went, I was on more boring conference calls the next day about whatever <laughs> issue came up that day. It was boring conference call, corporate life, like, and travel. That was my job. So that's my advice is you know, just, you have to put in the work. It does not happen overnight. You see overnight success in TikTokers a, probably more than any other spot, but they're not necessarily making a, you know, a huge amount of money just because they're, you know, getting millions of views. So don't get it twisted. So they may still have a job, but they're just, you know, portraying this lavish lifestyle. So most people of all the creators I've interviewed, uh, almost all of them have failed have pivoted, have grinded it out when no one was watching, when no one cared. And Gary Vanderchuk gave the best piece of advice. He said, I made videos about wine for six years. And he goes, and no one gave a f because <laughs> no one was watching. No one knew who Gary Vanderchuk was. No one cared who Gary Vanderchuk was. He, but he kept making those videos every week. And he said, what kept him going, and this is what kept me going too, and this is my advice to you, is to love the process. For me, I love talking to interesting people. You know, even if this all goes away and I have to go get a corporate job tomorrow, like I'll continue to do this because I genuinely love even the emails to PR people and going back and forth for weeks or months to get one interview, which seems like a, 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 a huge waste of time for an hour interview, right? But, you know, reaching out to brands, not getting paid on time from brands, all this other stuff. I just love it all. So you really have to go into it loving, just for the love of the game. If you're in it just to make money, you're not going to succeed. I think that that is so true. And I love hearing you say that because that's that's something that I feel like so many people just don't understand. Like you said, you have to love what you're doing. You have to love the nature of what you're doing. And you have to also, 
it sounds crazy and it kind of is, but you have to also love like doing a lot of work where, like you mentioned, and thank you again for saying this too, you were the one investing in yourself by, by bringing in a team and bringing in editors and, and bringing in all of these people. And that's another big thing. And I've seen it all too well in the industry where people are like, well, why should I have to, I shouldn't ever have to pay for acting lessons. I should never have to pay for this, that, and the other. And I'm like, no, it's, it's an investment. You, you look at yourself like you're an LLC and you take that chance on yourself and congratulations, you're the CEO. You are everything from, from up to down, you know, and that is what you are. And if you want to do that, that's great. But just like any startup, you have to invest. You have to put money forward in order to see that, that ROI. Um, that return that return of investment. So I love that you said all of those things because I think that they, they've been said before, but it's just so important to remind everybody about and to remind ourselves about too, because I'm right there with you, sitting there on my couch, hunched over on LinkedIn, just finding whoever I can that I feel like is in alignment, coming up I with rate today. Sheets, I was on, everything. I was on LinkedIn today. Hit me up. Be on LinkedIn, yes. everybody. I was looking for this person at this brand I wanted to work with. I still do that stuff. <laughs> Me too. I know. I do it. I sit in my hoodie and I'm just sitting there and I'm like, my cat comes up. I'm like, not now. Mommy's trying to get you some pate. Give me a second. You know, I try to, I'm like, mommy's, mommy's working. It's so, but you know, but we love it clearly. And also thank you for saying about don't, don't jump to any endeavor financially until you've secured yourself. You cannot go and quit your job just to chase something that isn't a lucrative, sustainable income for you until you know that you can make that jump. That's huge too huge. <laughs> well, Tom, you are wonderful. Let us know. Go ahead and take the moment to um, take a moment to plug anything in terms of your social media. And let me know if there's anything that we can share with our audience in terms of any anything that you have up and coming with the Tom Ward show that you're particularly looking to promote or just simply where people can find you and stay attuned to everything that you have coming up. Yeah, just go to, um, just follow me. Just follow the Tom Ward Show <laughs> podcast and YouTube channel. Every Tuesday, I have new interviews with successful people who teach us how to elevate our business and our lives. Past guests have been, I mean, Gary Vanderchuk, Paris Hilton, Charlie D'Amelio, Sierra, Rob Deerdeck. I mean, a good pool of guests, and every week you're going to learn something. Um, and then go to TomWard.com. You can subscribe to my newsletter on there too. Every Wednesday, I send out a new newsletter with lessons learned from interviews with over 200 successful people. Again, how to elevate your business and your life. And on TomWard.com too, it has links to all my socials. So go check that out too. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Tom. Everybody, make sure that you go and support Tom and show him some love. Check out his interviews. He's interviewed so many different types of people. And like he mentioned, some all A-listers. So please go check Not out a- all of his content as well. I mean, You've interviewed some- a lot of them, Tom. A lot okay, of them. Right. <laughs> you are so cool. Thank you. <laughs> Take it. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you next time. Thank you guys so much for watching and thank you to Tom for coming on the show. Please go ahead and show Tom some love and support over on his channel and on his page. I know he would appreciate it very much and you really have to check out the Tom Ward show. He does such a phenomenal job and he interviews such great people with great pieces of advice, both life advice and just financial advice. Very much in alignment with what Tom was saying in terms of elevating your life. So definitely check out the Tom Ward Show as well. And thank you again to Tom for coming on and for speaking with me. Make sure that you guys check out all of the pre-existing episodes of Hey Han as well and go show those episodes a lot of love and support. And without further ado, my message to my audience, my challenge to my audience is to spend some time with yourself this week. I've noticed that I have been fully immersed in work and just getting a lot of things done, which is so wonderful, and I love to be productive. I am a workaholic, proudly. However, I've found that spending some alone time with myself is probably the reason why I can continue to stay at that pace. So make sure that you are spending some time with yourself in whatever form that takes, if it's even just like spending a few hours in the morning in your bed on the weekend and and not getting out of bed, not answering your phone, and maybe just turning on the TV and watching a good show. If it is going on a walk at golden hour after you get off of that nine to five shift whatever that is for you just make sure that you're spending some time with yourself this week and that you're not just filling your time with talking on the phone to other people or always socializing make sure that you're able to spend some time with yourself because that's extremely important especially in 2023 thank you guys so much for watching i will see you in the next episode of hey han again i'm hannah fletcher and i'll see you next time bye everyone